when you stand in the position that I do, and you go into a room and ask the people in the room, as I do quite often, how many of them know of someone who died early or who suffered needlessly because either they did not have health insurance, they were underinsured, or they were the victim of disparities. In most cases, at least 85 to 90 percent of the people raised their hands. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the United States of America. We can do better. Talk about it. We can do better. It's in my oath. It's in my oath. Every two years. Every two years. My duty to protect the American people from enemies within and enemies without. That is my job. And let me, let me be very clear. When 40, 45,000 Americans are dying every year because they don't have health insurance, all the people who are suffering needlessly because they, because they don't have health insurance, and those who may go around and say that this does not exist, all you got to do is visit a few funeral homes and you'll find out. It's very real. And so let's go on from there. Then there are the folks who come to me and say that we want, we don't want government to be involved in the process. And then I ask them the question, well, who are you insured by? And they say Medicaid. I heard that over and over and over again. Or I say, who are you insured by? And they say, the VA. And I say, they are run by the United States government. But there's something that bothers me about this argument to the nth degree. When people must go around and tell lies about death battles. Stuff that's not even in the bill. But on the other hand, Think about this. We have death penalty battles every day. Insurance companies make decisions every day. And people die. And so, and so we have a situation where no matter what, no matter how hard you may holler, no matter how hard you may scream, I will go to my grave trying to lift up the American people and making sure that they have the insurance and the health care that they need. And the interesting thing, 
is that when she asked the question, why is it that I have to pay $22,000 when I've been paying these premiums over and over and over and over again, they said you had a $3,000 limit on everything. And then she told us to make sure that we that anybody in the District of Columbia who was planning on having a baby to check their insurance policy. This is happening every day, folks. That's right. And so, and then the other people, they get sick. And then suddenly their premium goes up. Or they get sick, and then suddenly they're dropped. And then we have the insurance policies. And I don't know about you, but if policies are going up sometimes as much as $1,100 to $1,800 a year. And so while you may keep your policy, at some point you may get to a point where you cannot afford it. That's major. And, and so if you don't, if you don't, if you can't afford it, what good is having the privilege if you can't buy it? So ladies and gentlemen, now let's talk about the public option. In Maryland, in Maryland, like so many other states, in Maryland, I think it's two two companies uh, insure seventy percent of the people, eighty percent, and you can go around the country and find similar statistics. And so, what is happening now is that you have situations where there is no competition. And the reason why the insurance companies can continue to charge these high premiums is because, is because they have to pay their shareholders. And the only reason why the President and, and many of us in the Congress have been asking for a public option is not for uh, the, the government to take over insurance. No, we're just trying to make sure that all Americans have an opportunity to be insured. That makes sense. And so, and, so, and so what I'm saying to you is that what we must do is we must find a way to make sure that every American has access to available and affordable housing. I think it was Baron Mitchell who said it over and over again. And I think about it so much as I get older and I face my own mortality. But it was Perry Mitchell who said, I only have a minute. 60 seconds in it. Forced to fight me, I did not choose it. But I know that I must use it. Give account if I abuse it. Suffer if I lose it. Only a tiny little minute. But eternity is in it. You may not agree with me. You don't, you don't have to agree with me. But I am telling you, I know it is morally right. This is a moral issue. This is morally right. And, and, and people can argue with me until the sun comes up tomorrow. But this is something that is a moral issue. That we must take care of our people of other countries can do it, then we must do it. We cannot do it. We must do it. We must not allow our citizens, our fellow brothers and sisters, our aunts, our uncles, our mothers, our fathers, to get develop cancer and have no way to get the cure when the cure is right down the street. It's happening every single day. So I want to thank you for inviting me. Believe it or not, I feel better now. I feel better.